Today, Zen and the art of financial advice. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today I'm joined by Tim Fuller, Head of Advice at Nucleus Wealth. Hi Tim. G'day Martin, great to be back on again. Well thanks very much for spending some time with us. And look, I want to explore with you this whole concept of financial advice because I get a lot of people really confused about this right so on one hand they feel they need advice and they sort of say well you know I'm sure I could get some really good ideas but on the other hand they've also heard lots of stories of bad advice where advisors effectively take people into different product sets that actually benefit the advisor rather than, <laughs> rather than the uh, the investor um, and of course we've got now a whole bunch of different modes of advice compared with what we had. So I'd like to unpack that a bit if I could. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Ask away. OK, so in the old traditional mode of advice, it tended to be a long conversation covering everything from what your risks are, where do you want to invest, you know, how long do you want to invest for? Have you got a will, etc, etc, etc. And at the end of it, at the sausage machine comes a well, you should probably do this then or you should do that then. And in some cases, then advisors would um, uh, perhaps even transact and uh, support. Very expensive, very long winded, very complicated. And uh, the question I get is, how effective do you think that was? Well, look, yeah, it's a great question. Um, and it certainly brings into frame uh, the, the, the ways of the old and I guess, you know, the exciting sort of uh, opportunities that, are, that we're faced with you know, going forward and the, and the way that advice is certainly evolving. Mm. Um, look, a huge part of the old way, uh, and, and we've got to be careful here, we're generalising um, because there has been, you know, good quality advisors throughout time. But one of the big problems in the past was the pro proliferation of uh, product and, and how that with, was then influencing advice. Uh, a, a big part of that was then obviously going to an advisor, you need to work out uh, whose barrow they were pushing. And uh, that's what made it uh, very hard. And that's what the opaqueness of, of uh, exactly who was getting paid and, and how they were getting paid is, what, of course, where a lot of these unfortunate stories have come from. So in the old days, a lot of those advisors would effectively have been paid by the fees off the products they sold rather than an overt commercial arrangement, right? Well, that's right. Absolutely, Martin. And and look, the days of uh, commissions, in particular uh, investment commissions, uh, which sort of ended around 2012 uh, with the future of uh, financial advice reforms, uh, was really, uh, I guess, a, a turning point in the way that uh, an advisor could view a, a client situation and then recommend products. If the advisor was getting paid a big commission, that would influence the advice. And by turning that off and, and closing that down, it, it was a, a step in the right direction. It wasn't, you know, a complete shift change, but it certainly did move the, uh, the process of advice. And, and also, I guess, the reasoning for advisors wanting to enter into the advice industry, um, which is a paramount thing. And certainly in my experience, and I guess I'm a post-2012 uh, advisor coming into, uh, into the industry after these sort of commissions were removed, there needed to be a big drive to obviously benefit the client and, and build a relationship and make this a long term and uh, enduring relationship in order for it to work both for obviously the, the client, but and also for the advisor in, in, um, in, in maintaining that client relationship. Right. And so one of the things that really has come to the fore is this idea of best interest, right? So effectively, advisors now are clearly obligated to work for and in the interests of the client, whereas previously in the old days that really wasn't very true. Well, yeah, I guess you could say there's certainly been some egregious cases of really poor advice that was driven by uh, these these high commissions and, and products that were basically, you know, uh, creating such an, an impetus to to be recommended by people that were that were willing to do so, mm. um, that it you know they created the the various scandals and, and really problematic periods, particularly th uh, through the GFC, which is um, an illuminating point I think for uh, poor product and poor advice and exactly what can happen when markets turn and, and the amount of damage it can do 
to, to clients, um, you know, financial futures, absolutely, and, and wholeheartedly um, agree with the changes for, for that reason. Um, going forward from there, though, I guess what what needs to happen now is people need to perhaps uh, look at giving advice a go again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and look, I've, I've spoken to many people throughout our journey at Nucleus Wealth who have, have stopped, you know, even considering advice because of some of the the, um, the poor practices that they saw or experienced themselves through um, things like the GFC and, and, and um, those sort of years um, after that. And it really took them, you know, five, 10 years to start thinking about speaking to somebody who had the word financial advisor or financial planner or, or even just reaching out into, the, into that part of the industry again, um, which is quite sad. Uh, and and I, look, I'm doing everything I can to try and reverse that and, and, and bring the message back out there again that the industry is changing uh, and there are many different opportunities to seek advice, not necessarily the, the full advice, as, as you mentioned at the start there, the big long, long drawn out process looks very involved um, often very expensive as well, and particularly now where compliance is, the compliance levels, of course, with higher levels of regulation means that advice is now more expensive than ever to produce, which obviously then makes it more expensive to, to the client and the end user. And so what's happening now is the, the, the industry is effectively evolving to, to find efficiencies and also to harness some of the, um, the new uh, emerging technologies that, are, that have come out there that give people the opportunity to seek smaller amounts of advice for smaller uh, issues that they may be you know, immediately needing help with, without having to then broach the entire subject of their um, their whole financial future and you know and on, on all the different facets of advice. Still relevant when it's required, but little baby steps I think into um, into seeking advice and, and getting you know the right advice at the right time. I think is is the future going forward. Mm, and it's worth I think breaking it down right because you say. Absolutely right. There is still a place for the full Monty, as it were, which is saying, well, what are you trying to achieve? You know, what is your risk profile, et cetera, et cetera, right? There's a bunch of big questions there. And some of those questions are actually quite hard to answer. But then there's a step beyond that, because once you've got a sense of where you're heading and what you're trying to achieve, the next step is then what's the most effective mechanisms and what are the right selections to make? And, and so that's a different part of the conversation. And then there is a structural question because, of course, the old philosophy is, well, you probably want some things that are actually less risky than others. And some will be long term, some will be short term. So there is, a, if you like, portfolio construction and optimization. And then there is the execution and delivery element, right? So that's the sort of the value chain that I see across the advice. And I think quite often people get confused about which part of the puzzle they're actually in the middle of. Look, 100%. And, and look, uh, speaking around the, the new technology and obviously digital advice, and that's something that we, we've used very successfully at Nucleus Wealth, we're very mindful of the fact that it, it really only serves to do a, one small component very well. Uh, and then you've got to have the ability to break out of the online piece if it's not suitable and, and we need to um, look at it or address it, you know, in, in a human format, you know. Um, and, and so... By doing that, what you're doing is you, you, you're ticking a box, perhaps, for people that, that, that do need exactly what, you know, let's say a digital advice service can do. And investments is just one. Um, and as, I guess, technology grows and also people's acceptance to use technology, which is, I guess, the other side of the coin in getting, um, you know, the right solution at the right time and, and, and at the right price. The, one of the beauties of digital uh, advice is it can be delivered cheaply and quickly. Um, but it doesn't, it will, in my eyes, it will never completely overtake, uh, you know, the sit down human face to face element for much broader areas. And the, I guess the, depending on the client's needs, and this is always coming back to the client's needs, you need to work out what's the most appropriate course of action. One of the good things about the digital advice piece is you can go in, have a bit of a look. If it doesn't work, then you know that you can be effectively uh, transferred out into, you know, into a human, um, you know, referral or, or talking to, to somebody to flesh out exactly what those needs are. But you kind of need to know those needs first. And, and so part of the process is saying, okay, well, here's what digital advice can do, but here's what it can't do. And if any of these areas uh, you still feel need to be covered off, well, then what that's doing is it's flagging to somebody that they that they, they they've then got an opportunity to speak um, you know to, to a face to face advisor and 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 have those areas covered and effectively building um, those uh, those broader concerns. 
Right. And one of the things I wanted to explore was the relationship between financial advice and investment advice. Because mm. what I mean is if I'm a, if I'm a householder or, a, you know, a, a consumer, um, I may well have a mortgage. I may well have other financial needs as well. And, and so just looking at the investment piece in isolation from the overall financial footprint of that particular uh, uh, householder might actually lead you up the garden path. Look, it can and it can't. I guess the um, the idea is you've got to you've got to have a bit of an idea. Or most people have uh, when they go to see an advisor, they normally have one goal in in place. So it might be they're saving for a home. They might be um, worried about whether or not they're going to have a um, a comfortable retirement. I guess you know using the investment sort of piece. Speaking to an advisor can then flesh out other areas as well, um, and and quite often they can dovetail in. And a, quite an easy one is looking at whether or not you may have a mortgage and you're wanting to pay it down. Now, now there's a piece there in looking at whether or not the the mortgage you've got currently is the right one for you at the right price. But also then, okay, I've got some excess money. Do I put it into superannuation and start working on a comfortable retirement, or do I put it into uh, my mortgage and start working on the other goal, which is to you know for most people sit there and paying off their home. Um, those are the sort of areas that uh, digital advice uh, can look to cover, uh, and it's sort of something that you know is being uh, built out, I guess, in in, in the Australian um, industry and, and what's available out here. But the, uh, for the moment, uh, it's probably best left to um, to a human uh, advisor or a human relationship. The other component of well, as well, of course, is the problem that you've got today. Uh, maybe solved, which is great, but life is life and things change. Yeah. <laughs> and so the relationship can be important as well um, from that regard, because the plans you're setting today in a couple of years time could be a change of job, change of home. Um, there's all sorts of uh, variables in that in that sort of, you know, in, in everybody's life um, that obviously then the plans need to be updated on, you know, on a reasonably ongoing basis. Just on that, though, I guess, um, and this is sort of looking in the past, more often than not, with you have a, a typical face to face relationship. You can always call them and set up times, uh, but you know you'll often just have a you know maybe it's a half yearly or an annual meeting. You've got to go into the city, you've got to um, you know make some time in the office and you know book out a day and do all the rest of it. An interesting uh, little uh, piece, I guess, of 2020, and it's been a, an interesting year, I guess, on, you know, in, in many regards, <laughs> is the the industry itself, the financial advice industry, of, of course, has have, have had to move to exactly what we're doing now, the um, the Zoom experience. Of course, what's that, what, what that's done for uh, advice, though, is it's meant that you can have much shorter, more powerful, um, you know, punchier meetings, I guess, uh, for, for shorter term issues without having to sort of save them all up for your annual meeting with your advisor, in which case, you know, anything can happen. And I actually see that as a real positive uh, for where the advice industry is going. It means that, you know, both on the client side, there's a huge efficient, efficiency in saving time and, and being able to just get in front of an advisor quickly. At the same time, from an advisor's point of view, you can see you know, a vast number more clients um, sitting in your office or sitting at home or wherever you are and, and getting the job done without that that time of having to sort of commute around and, and set up times and, you know, book meeting rooms and all the rest of it. So, uh, mm. look, I think that's a, that's a real positive going forward. And I can see that really being a leg up into people getting good quality advice um, in, a, in a much more efficient and timely manner. Uh, going forward from from here, so yeah, so I think that's uh, very good, and of course the, the you know the digital uh, connectivity uh, really allows people to take more control for some things. Uh, one of the things I like about the nucleus wealth uh, solution set is that there is actually a, a a range of different options from an advice perspective which are accessible via. You know, nucleus wealth, which of course is why we've uh, got this tie up with uh, the Walk the World Fund and Walk the World Super, because my sense was that people quite often are a bit lost as to which way to go. And so there's an entry point which is relatively simple and straightforward and accessible that can lead to a range of different permutations based on, on need, I guess. And the, the other point, of course, as you to underscore that is this isn't a set and forget thing, is it? You, you, you can't basically say, right, my investment strategy for the next 15 years is X and then forget about it right there's got to be a little bit of uh, pruning and tweaking and changing as things change personal circumstances change the markets change uh, and therefore there's a little bit of a requirement to keep it refreshed and keep it up to date oh look absolutely yeah, you've nailed it martin the you know a big part of what we've put together is that it gives people a, an obligation free and also pressure free environment normally your own home you're sitting down after work, you can sit down with your spouse, you can go through it in your own time, log out, log back in again, it's all safe. And it really gives 
people an opportunity to just have a look. You get you get the uh, at the review stage, you get the portfolio, you get the recommendations, all the all the documentation provided instantly and free. Um, and look for mine, you know, for, for a lot of people out there, they're really just trying to do exactly that. You, you, you're wanting to seek advice. You've got a problem that you want to solve. And more often than not, having more than one solution is, is beneficial in front of you. So you can make a choice. You can you can reason um, and, and and settle on something and also, you know, have some confidence in your decision. Uh, and that's sort of something, I guess, where digital advice can do that really easily uh, and provide a number of solutions in the frame. You can go to um, various providers. You can have a look at different scenarios within the same. And we offer that um, quite easily. It's a dynamic system. Um, but at the end of the day, you haven't you haven't got a guy hovering on the other side of the desk with a pen saying, OK, you know, are you going to sign? You can you can book a phone call. You can have a chat to myself and the team as well, which is which is always great. And I think, look, I speak to you know most, if not all, of our of our investors at some point. It's it's less about the advice. It's more about just having a human touch and and then just getting your final questions answered. We provide everything on the website, but a lot of people just need to work through it at their own time and have the you know the questions answered in the right order. And that's what we're here for. Mm. And I like the low pressure uh, mode of engagement, right? So people can basically take the initiative and go as fast or as slow as they want. Um, the other point though, I just want to sort of end on is the concept of nucleus, nucleus wealth, right? Is something also very important because what it basically says is there is a core investment element which effectively should be relatively contained and low risk and managed but you've still got the option of experimentation around the edge right but but mm. this is about the core of your investment strategy isn't it absolutely yeah and look you've nailed it once again the nucleus is, as as the uh, the name uh, i guess denotes um is really about saying we want to we want to sit in the middle of, of, a, of a typical client's portfolio now a lot of our clients um Give us everything they've got because they just want to look after um you know in a, in a sensible fashion with plenty of transparency but a lot of other people out there have got other interests as well you know um and so what they can say is well look up I'll, I'll put the bulk of it perhaps with with nucleus wealth uh we have you know quite a vanilla um, style of investing that's very transparent so cash federal government bonds and, and large cap equities uh, and which is you know for a lot of people quite boring um, and so we say well look, look let us do the boring stuff right and you can have a dabble in things like um, commodities or precious metals or cryptocurrencies and all those sort of things and just know that that's just one part of your portfolio that you'll probably enjoy running um, you know that you can look after yourself uh, and leave and leave the rest to us and, and know that you can always see exactly what you've got and what your exposures are as well yeah <laughs> and I think that's quite important because I sometimes say to people you know investing is 80 to 90 percent boring right uh, what, <laughs> what, what you shouldn't be doing is putting the whole of your portfolio into sort of crypto and saying, well you know if that goes well i'll be fine because it might not right mm. um so there is there is a sort of uh, fit for purpose uh, side as well but nevertheless um having a little bit of exploration around the edge uh you know be it um you know gold miners or whatever it is um is quite legitimate in terms of an overall strategy but you do need a strategy Exactly right, yeah, and, and and as you say, you know, the, the ability to focus on what you like doing means that you you often then disregard uh, diversification, which is one of the crucial components of putting together a you know a long term portfolio or even a short term just a quality portfolio. Mm. Uh, and so by saying, okay, well, I realise the fact that you know large cap equities and, and and tactical asset allocation, making sure that I'm out of you know out of problematic markets, at, you know, in, in in times like like we've seen in 2020. Uh, is important, but I don't want to sit there and look after that part of it all, all day because I like reading, you know, about gold miners and I think there's some good opportunity there. And so by having that piece where you can say, okay, I can hive off some money, I can keep it with these guys, I know exactly what, what's going on over there, I've set it up well and I'm comfortable with it, means that you can then get up every morning and just find one small part of the portfolio and not turn into a, you know, a day-to-day -day personal fund manager. Mm, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the reason we pick the title Zen and the art, because this is more than just mechanics, right? There is actually a whole philosophy here, which is important that people understand it, because actually the philosophy will guide you to a much better outcome rather than just reacting tactically to what's going on. Uh, oh, look, absolutely. And this is a big part of getting external help, I think, in any uh, facet of, of human life you know you, you go you, if you've got a very expensive car you're generally not working on it yourself because you know that if it goes wrong it starts getting expensive very quickly um, your financial future for mine is exactly the same and that's why you get professional help in there you've got to find the right help um, that's giving you good advice telling you what you're doing and it's coming at the right price of course and that's where it can be difficult but by the same token um, 
by 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 recognizing the fact that you need advice and that you're happy to take it, then you, you're really just taking a small step into um, what's you know the right direction for mine as well. So. Uh, look, there's there's plenty of people out there. There's plenty of advisors out there as well. Um, and, you know, it's a big part of, of, of realising that you need advice is then looking forward and going, okay, where am I going to get it from and who do I trust? Uh, and, you know, for mine, we, well, I guess for ourselves as well, we've put together a very transparent model. We're very open about what we do and we talk about it on your show, of course, and, and on our own uh, podcast every week as well. So we like to think we're, we're making all the right noises and, uh, and heading in the right direction. Well, thank you very much, Tim. I appreciate your time today. Uh, we'll put some links and things below as normal. And uh, I think we might come back and have a more detailed conversation about the mechanics of advice, perhaps in a separate show. But thanks for your time today. Wonderful. Glad to be back on again. Good on you, Martin. Thanks. Bye-bye.